Oh yeah, <laughs> this is the Steyr Hunting 5A, A standing for auto, and uh, yeah, it's definitely a bit of fun. So anyway, keep watching, review coming up. Before we start, don't forget to check out airgunology.com. You'll find our latest videos, forums where you can trade and sell and buy air rifle equipment. Plus also, we have lots of 3D printed items on there. So go and check it out, ergonology.com or check out the YouTube video description below. Hi there YouTubers, it's Steve here, aka Catanonia, and welcome to another video on Ergonology. On this channel, as always, we do air rifles and technology reviews. So if you're new here, you stumbled across us, hit that subscribe button down below. And I'm um, also in there, uh, underneath in the video description, you'll find a link to uh, Amazon where I've done reviews on non-rifle stuff that you might like, as well as a link to our Facebook group where we're growing quite rapidly on there and you can ask pretty much anything you want regards to air rifles and technology but today we have got this bad boy um, okay straight off the bat yeah there's going to be a lot of questions about this okay and I'll try to answer them and remember these are only my opinions on this so um, yeah what have we got here we've got this Steyr um, and this is the hunting five now it does come in about four different variants. You can get the Hunting 5 and you get the Hunting 5 Scout. And the Scout is basically a carbine version which is smaller. It's about 13 centimeters shorter and less shot count on it. But you can also get the Hunting 5A. Now if you look at the Steyr website, they call it the 5A for automatic. It's not an automatic rifle. Let's get that out of the way straight away. Elephant in the room, I think you can see pellet up there. It's not an automatic. But, however, it is what I personally would class as a semi-automatic. Now, we can have as many different arguments as we want about this. At the end of the day, um, what is a semi-automatic? There's the letter of the law and all of that lot. But in my opinion, a semi-automatic is when you pull the trigger, and you don't have to recock the rifle. And as you saw in the intro there, I fired five shots off within a second and a half. Yeah, so cock it once, magazine in, and away you go. So yeah, that's basically, hopefully sort of like, um, sort of explained that in a little bit of a way there, but we'll go into more of that later on. So I've got the hunting 5A in front of me, and thank you, thank you, thank you very much to Jeff, who has lent me this baby. Now, let's get one other elephant out of the room here, the price. Yeah, this is not a cheap rifle. Um, you are looking anywhere between 2,000 and 2,200 pounds, depending which one you get. Um, yeah, it is expensive, and they are difficult to get hold of. Some of the RFDs do have them, like Soulware got them. And like I said, the Scout is basically shorter. It is 13 centimeters shorter and a shorter uh, cylinder on it, which basically means obviously you're going to get less shot count, but it's more carryable around farms and stuff like that. So let's give you some um, other stats on this actual rifle. And I've got my notes here, so apologies if I'm looking down. So let's just concentrate on the actual 5A hunting. It is, the length of it is a shade over a meter. It's 1,020 millimeters. Its weight unscoped is 3.3 kilograms. Um, if you get the Scout version, its length is 890 and it's 2.9 kilograms. The barrel on it on the 5A hunting is 650 millimeters. And again, if you get the carbine scout version, you're looking at 520 mils. And the trigger apparently has a 250 to 600 gram pull on it. So it's a full match trigger in there. Now you can get this um, in a 177 or in a 25. And I'm really off loads of numbers here, but lots of people like to know this. Now you can get this, if you get it in the 177 you can get it in a 7.5 joule a 16 joule which is 12 foot pounds 
or you can then get it in a 24 joule. And if you get it in the 2.2, you can get a 16 joule, 12 foot pounds, 24 joule, or 40 joule, which is um, 40 joules is about 30 foot pounds. So those are the specs you can get, but you really, you know, you've got the usual 177.22, a carbine, or the longer version, and different power limits on there. Now obviously when you do go with the carbine, like I said, it's shorter, less shot counts. Now shot counts are a bit difficult to work out on this, so I can give you the 177s, because this is what I've got here. You are effectively looking at about 200 shots per fill. So that's all of the specs there for you. So let's do our usual and walk around the rifle. Now this actual rifle at the moment itself is um, fitted with a Conus scope on it. Um, but let's start at the back. We have the uh, rubber, rubber's eyes butt plate, which can lift up and down. Uh, there's no um, cast on it, but 3D movement. It's literally up and down on there. Um, it's nothing special, nothing to write home about. Now the actual stock itself looks quite nice from one side. Now maybe it's just this particular mo this particular rifle, but on this side it looks quite nice. It's a deep, um, nicely grained, beautiful trigger. Um, handguard on here, pistol grip. Um, it's in a nut wood. Um, and it is really nice, large um, thumb hole uh, stock on here to reduce weight. However, if I flip the bad boy around and mind in the microphone, I don't know if you can make that out, but hopefully you'll see it in the pictures. It's a different colour on the other side. Maybe it's just this piece of wood. Let's just hold that up there. That's that side quite nice-ish on that side is a different colour. Anyway, we'll talk more about that later. We then come down and we have a safety catch here. Um, this is your standard safety catch where you can flick it on and you can flick it off. Um, you need to have a magazine in to be able to flick that on and off. It's quite quiet and it's adjustable, uh, it's resettable as well, quite nice. Now the magazine loading system and the cocking is here, I will come on to that in a bit. Like we said, we've got a nice trigger guard, the trigger here has got a nice flat blade on it, it's fully adjustable, um, it's quite a light trigger, it's actually a very, very comfortable trigger. And basically you've got a finger um, thumb wrap around on here, if I want to show you that side, thumb wrap around. There's no real thumb up on this, on this uh, rifle itself. The stock comes along, we've got Steyr in the middle written on here. The actual gripping on there is beautiful, it's really nice. I do like the stock on one side of it. Nice slip in, which is actually really, really good. Um, it does give you a good firm hold on it. So that's the stock itself. Underneath then we have the actual cylinder, the air reservoir. Um, like I said, in 177 sub 12 foot pound, you're looking at about 200 shots. Um, we have the uh, gauge on the front, so on this one it's a 200 uh, bar fill, and the fill probe is a little bit like the Virax. The fill probe is in the end, it's one of those quick adapters, um, it's not a Foster's, and basically it's got one of these little caps on it, which, yeah, yeah, okay, um, yeah, it's in there, that's how that works. Um, and then the barrel over the top of it, obviously being Steyr, this is a fantastic match grade barrel over the top of it. Now what you don't get by default is you don't get a half UNF on the end. So what you actually have to do is either get a Steyr adapter on here, which basically you screw or glue on here, which then gives you a half UNF on the top of it, or do what Jeff did and he got one on eBay which allowed him basically to slip it over, glue it and screw, grub screw it in there to give the half UNF. Um, the bark on it is actually fairly loud-ish. It's sort of like middling of the rifle. Certainly not as loud as an MP2, um, but it's certainly not a quiet rifle. If you're backyard plinking, you may very well want to put a moderator on there or a silencer on there. Scope rails up the top are your standard 11mm dovetails. Now, it's a little bit weird, this, is you've got a long scope rail across the top here that you might be able to use to put your whole scope on, but there's a, like a little inch and a half sliver at the back here for the rear. Um, and it may limit you, you've got to be careful with that, but it's standard 11mm on there. And if we flip it around the other side, there's not a lot to write home about on the other side. Okay, so that's the basics of the rifle as well. Um, there's two stock bolts on the bottom here on that, and that's the basics. So before we go into how does this thing actually work, what I want to show you is the magazine. 
Now, the magazine itself is a position-made, and I'll leave some better pictures of this, position-made piece of metal. Um, it's, I think it's probably aluminium or something like that. And you slot the pellets in. Now, there is a little indicator on here, which is a little picture of a pellet. And again, I'll leave you images where you slot your, right, your pellets in. It's a five shot, and you get two of these with your rifle. Um, you can buy them additionally, and they're about 40 to 50 pounds. Um, and how does this bad boy work? Well, quite simply, the way it works is the cocking lever here is you load your pellets up, your cocking lever here is you pull it back once and you hear it click. You then make sure that you put your magazine in the right way round, and literally you just push it in, and if you bring this close, you hear it ratcheting it goes on a ratchet system so that ratchet is basically set to this magazine and the way that this actually works is that you do never actually put a pellet into the barrel so there's no single shot load in this bad boy at all you've got to use the magazine and the pellet is in the magazine and what happens is when you pull the trigger it is actually shooting the pellet through the magazine into the barrel and out of the barrel. Now, if you think about that, the tolerances needed there have to be absolutely perfect. That magazine is precisely made, probably down to the micrometer, because of it has to line up perfectly with the pellet, the magazine, and the barrel to make sure everything goes nice and smooth. Otherwise, what will happen if it's not perfect, you will get a pellet come out of the magazine, and then it will clip the barrel because it's not quite lined up and then obviously it's going to go all over the place. So you load it like so. Now we can actually adjust the safety catch, put it on or off as much as we want. To take the magazine out, you, there's a little button under here which you press and it will fly out. So put your finger over it and it will just slot out like so. Nice and simple. So pellets in, magazine in. Here the ratchet, that is like tightening up a cog ratchet system. And what happens is when you pull the trigger, it fires a blast of air through the magazine, pushes the pellet out the magazine, out of the barrel, and cycles the magazine one step on the ratchet out. In other words, it self-indexes the actual magazine. And I can show you how that works. So if I fire once, uh, put the safety off, fire once. Obviously this is empty. One, and I don't know if you can see that, but the actual magazine is coming out. Two, three, four, five, and the magazine's out. The next one will just be a click. That tells you that the magazine's empty, and then you can take the magazine out. So this is how they're actually getting these to be legal in the letter of the law, is that they're not putting a pellet into the barrel, they're firing the pellet through the magazine, it's the magazine that's moving. Now think of it like your BB pistols, your, ones, your BB pistols, um, like the X5, the Six P226, they basically have a belt and it's the magazine that is moving, the belt that's moving, and when you pull the trigger it cycles the belt and it fires the pellet out of the barrel. And that gives you effectively a semi-automatic pistol. This is working in exactly the same method. It is like a horizontal revolver. That's how it works. So um, hopefully that shows you how it all works. Now, one of the nice things about it is that when you do have the rifle all shouldered up and you're looking through the scope, because you're not having to cock the rifle between each shot, your point of aim is not changing. Being a PCP, this rifle obviously has got no kick on it um, and therefore basically you're just looking at the right at the target putting the crosshairs on bang 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 job done nothing moves it's you know just think of it as a normal rifle you're up you fire you cock you're moving your point of aim's changing you reset or you fire doesn't happen with this and being a style it is supposed to be stupidly accurate as well so you know the score, there's only one way to find out. You know I'm not a great shot, but we're going to take it outside. We're going to have a play, have a bit of fun with it, and uh, see how well we do. Okay, so we're outside now. We've got the Steyr Hunter 5A. It is an absolute glorious day, windless. We're at 25 metres. Now, I'm actually going to do a lot of this video without the fast forwarding or maybe without the music because of, you'll see why, but uh, we're going to take some steady shots first, 25 metres, uh, five rounds, 
Now I'm going to use the uh, JSB Exacts because we've done quite a bit of talent testing. It loves these eight point, uh, uh, what are they running at? They're 8.44 grain, so really, really nice pellets for this. Uh, five shot magazines, um, and we'll just have a bit of a play and then we'll do some rapid firing as well. So keep watching. That's how quick it was. Let's do another five. All right, quick reload, nice and simple to reload the magazine. There's a little indicator on there and literally you just push your five pellets into the metal magazine. Dead simple. I'm very impressed with this, very, very impressed. Let's do another five. You can see now why we're not speeding this up. <laughs> brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Let's do a quick five for water, finish off the target. <laughs> brilliant absolutely brilliant okay so what you all really want to see is rapid fire don't you we know that's what you want to see so I've got two magazines that's 10 shots um, we're just gonna go as quick as we can and see what it's like <laughs> that's the first five And the target's moving, it's wobbling. <laughs> That's just brilliant. Oh, I've got to do that again. Huge grin factor going on here. <laughs> the target's wobbling, it's not working very well. There you go. That is pretty spectacular. That was five shots, all pretty much in the same hole. Rapid fire, super, super impressed with that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna push it out now to about 40 meters, the maximum I can do in the, garage, in the garden, and we'll see how we get on. Okay, so I'm now out at 40 meters. I'm gonna do two magazines, 10 shots, take my time with it and see how well we get on. That's 10 shots at 40 meters. I am mega impressed with that. Okay, so we're back inside and um, I must admit straight away, it is a joy to shoot. It is fun, fun, fun. And you know, I'm just gonna do my usual pros and my usual cons. I'll probably mix them up. I've got some notes down here. There's a lot to talk about. So let's, let's start off straight away with the accuracy. So basically, um, I was using a variety of pellets, and to be honest, as long as you're using a decent pellet, like a JSB or an AA type pellets, so I was using JSB, Sovereigns, different types of pellets on there, and to be honest, I, I was just getting great results. It is just as accurate as, dare I say it, my Red Wolf that I'm just starting to get used to, that, uh, just as accurate as an FX Impact or a Wolverine. Um, and I'd expect that obviously out of a 2,000 pound rifle. But yeah, um, we all know I'm not the greatest shots and please, please don't turn around and say, oh, I can do that with a spring around 400 meters with my eyes closed, whatever, don't care. I'm not a great shot, but these are good shots for me. 177, consistent, accurate, taking my time, nice, simple click, 
fire, click, fire, click, fire. You've seen the pellets that I've used on the video. Have a look at them, see how we did on that. Then I took it out to 40 meters. Now that's as far as I can go in my back garden yard. Uh, yard and uh, yeah, that, that, that's great. That, that again is as good as a Red Wolf, um, as good as the FX Impact. They're all there. I think then there, there was 10 shots, two sets of five magazines, um, and literally just gone bang. A couple of seconds between each one, bang. Brilliant, super, super accurate. So how accurate is it when you use it in the rapid fire mode, i.e. what I call a semi-automatic mode? Well, straight in the center of there is two magazines as quick as I could. Literally, magazine in, bang, 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 bang. Magazine in, bang, 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 bang. 10 shots, superb, absolutely brilliant. Now that just proves the point that I was trying to say with this. Because if you've got that um, where you don't have to cock it between each shot and there's no recoil on the rifle, literally you put your eye, you put the crosshair on and you just pull, 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 pull. Absolutely brilliant. It is, you know, I've done it also out to 40 yards. I have put two magazines in the size of a two penny piece. You know, for me, that is fantastic. So straight up off the bat, Yes, it is accurate, and you'd expect that from Steyr. Steyr, a well-known Austrian company for all their Olympic-type rifles, and of course the price that you're paying. Which brings me on to a bad point, the price. Yes, they are stupidly expensive. £2,000. That is a lot, maybe more than that, depending where you get it from. So it's a lot. The grin factor. Uh, everybody I have given this to, to have a play, because I get a few people come round, lend me rifles, and say, here, have a go at this. Everyone I've shot it has shot it. They just have this biggest grin on their face. They love it, love it, love it. Oh, this is great fun. And literally, that leads me to a downside, is they are going to go through air and pellets so, so quickly. It is just so easy to fire off five shots, bang, 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 load up, bang, bang. Before you realize it, you've gone through 500 pellets in half an hour. That's how much fun. It has certainly got the grin factor, definitely. Another good plus point with this is, like as I mentioned right at the beginning, is the actual build quality of this is second to none. And it has to be. With these magazines, you, as I said before, they have got to be micrometer position for that magazine to slide, ratchet in perfectly, perfectly lined up with the barrel every single top time, thousands upon thousands of shots after each other. So that is definitely, you know, how they've done that, how they've managed it. You know, I've heard of people trying to 3D print these. No way is that gonna be possible. It's not gonna be possible. And before anyone asks, can you build a 10 shot one of these magazines? Probably not, because of the chances are is the regulator will run out of air, because the regulator obviously has enough air for X amount of shots, probably five or six shots in this case. If you built a 10 shot one, the chances are that the regulator would run out of air and your pellets would start dropping. Plus also, can you machine something as perfect as that to five shots? And another thing, is will this ratchet system in here actually allow 10 shots? I don't know, I'm not gonna try it. Certainly not on somebody else's rifle on that. So what else is good about it? The trigger. The trigger is, well, let, let's just say, you know, two grand, it's a style. You expect the trigger to be beautiful, and it is beautiful. I really am I'm loving the trigger on that. I said before about the point of aim, the fact that there's no recoil, really, really nice. So definitely, definitely a hard, uh, a really, really good um, hard case there to say, a good pro on that. Another one which you probably wouldn't think of is the fact that because of the pellets are always in the magazine, when you drop the magazine in, no pellet is actually going into the barrel. So at any time, let's say you're on the range and they ask you to make safe, take the magazine out, you're guaranteed there's no pellet in the barrel. Really, you know, that's one of the handy things about that. Um, really, really nice. But let's go on to some of the bad points. And I've mentioned price already. Yes, it is expensive, but you know what you're getting yourself into. So let's just leave it at that. The looks. Personally, I think this rifle is stuck in the year 2000. It looks very dated. Um, 
there's nothing nice going on about it. Um, personally, I think the rifle is a cracking rifle, but I hate the looks of it. That's just me. You might like the looks of it, but I think this could seriously, seriously do with an update. Um, I really do. And that also comes down to the fact that I've got a two grand rifle here, and the stock on one side and on the other side is a different color. Maybe it's just this one, maybe it's the wood graining on this particular piece of wood, but come on, it's terrible. It's pale that side, and on this side it's dark. Um, yeah, <laughs> it does, it does make, make you wonder on that. Uh, another downside is the cost of the mags. We've already talked about the fact that the amount of precision engineering that needs to be done, but at the end of the day, 40 to 50 pounds, look at FX magazines, look at Daystate magazines, they all cost quite a lot as well. BSA as well. So that's not too bad. Um, I hate the fact that there is the gauge under here. Everybody knows it's my pet hate. Um, I hate it being there. It should be here. And this is again what I'm talking about, that this is looks like and feels like it's stuck in the year 2000. Manufacturers now are putting their gauges under here um, and that's where they belong. So hopefully in the next version they bring out, they move the gauges around. Uh, the fact that you don't get a UNF on the end to add on your silencer or modifier is a bit of a no-no really, in my point, that you have to buy an additional thing, stick and grub screw it on just to get a UNF on there. Just bear that in mind, that's probably going to cost you an extra 20, 30 or 40 pounds on top of that. Uh, we talked about the fill gauge on there. Um, the back rail here to put a scope on is a little bit short. Um, it might cause you issues, just be aware of that at the moment. The fill probe, <laughs> I don't like that fill probe. I've seen them on the Virax. It's horrible. Why? Why not just have a little spinny cap like they do on the Brocox, on the Cricket and other things like that? That is horrible and that little bit there is a bit of cheap, cheap plastic is going to get lost, guaranteed it. Um, horrible, horrible, horrible. Don't like that at all. Um, and what else we got? Yeah, we talked about the pellets. Um, the fact that you're going to go through massive amounts of pellets on it. But let's just really come on to, and where is pellet? There he is up there, uh, the elephant in the room about this rifle, right? And it comes down to the legality of it. Now, currently in the UK, yes, it's legal. It's like Formula One cars. You remember those days when Jensen Button, um, I can't remember who it was, uh, but they put a double diffuser on. What they did is they read the F1 rules and they went, ah, well, if we change this, it doesn't actually break the rules. And it was going against the spirit of it. And of course, of basically they won for half of the season until everybody caught up. The same thing here is technically, Yes, this is legal in the UK because of it's not loading a pellet into the back, into the breech. There's loads of other little variations on the rules, but at the end of the day, what they're using is a revolving style magazine, or be it this one is a horizontal based magazine. Does it make for a fun rifle? Yes, it does. It is a fantastic rifle. It's great fun to shoot. However, in two years' time, are you going to be allowed to keep it? That's the question you've got to ask yourself at the end of the day. What happens if they turn around and they go, you know what, these should not have been legal. We should have got rid of them. I don't know. That is a big question for you. It's sort of, we have rules in the UK that we have ethic rules about um, looking after our sports and not having semi-automatic stuff. I don't care what people say. I don't care whether or not you look at the letters of the rules about whether or not there's only certain type of cartridges that are allowed to be semi-automatic or whether or not it's a weather pellet. I've heard all the different stories. I don't care. The fact is, is that you have to cock this once and press the trigger and keep pulling it. In my mind, is a semi-automatic rifle. And to be honest, I think it's fairly dangerous for the sport, especially as now there are new ones coming out. I believe there is a bullpup 10-shot version of a Steyr, as they call it, automatic. Even the fact that they're calling it an auto is really not doing our sport any good. So <clears throat> that's my concern. Um, I'm no legal expert. That's just my views, my thoughts. I would love to hear your thoughts down below. But big question, is it worth it? 
Yes, if you got the money. It is great, great fun. I, I love shooting it. It is a fantastic rifle. I think it is super accurate. Yes, you're paying big bucks for it. You're paying the bucks. Uh, Jeff asked me, where did all the money go in this? It doesn't look like. The money's gone in the engineering to get this thing to work. That's where the money's gone. Um, should you buy one? You can. I've said what I think about it um, at the end of the day. Um, we have rules in the UK and uh, personally I think things will change. We're starting to see more and more people trying to bend the rules in the air rifle market uh, in the UK and I think it's going to cause a few problems soon. But anyway, have you got a Steyr? Have you got a Steyr semi-auto or auto or whatever you want to call it? Have you got one? What do you think of it? Is it accurate? Um, do you like it? Is it worth the money? What's your views on the fact that they let you use these in the UK, sort of legally? Um, I'd love to know. Don't forget also to check out the links in the video description for uh, other stuff that I've reviewed, non-rifle related uh, from Amazon links, things like rangefinders, etc. Um, consider being a Patreon as well. I could do with some more Patreons, guys, to help this uh, channel along. Um, and leave me your thoughts and comments down below. I would love to hear from you. So until next time, catch you in the next video.